Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seamland, and in this video, I want to talk about what does my intermittent fasting schedule look like. So um, it's kind of a different one. It's not the standard 16 and 8 or 1 meal a day type of thing. It's a kind of a different uh, schedule. So we'll talk about how does it look like, what do I eat, how do I break it, and etc. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! So what I call it is uh, targeted intermittent fasting. And uh, what it essentially looks like is this basically graph that I illustrated to show you how does it look like. It's one meal a day with a twist. It's almost like one and a half meals a day. So this is how it looks like. Uh, let's say in the morning I wake up around 6 or 7 a.m. and then I'll, you know, I'm not going to eat breakfast. I'm not going to have any calories in the morning. I'll just, you know, start to work and I'll work for several hours in a row. Uh, well, just maybe drinking a little bit of water, but not even like a lot of that uh, during this time period. And the reason for that is, yeah, just my mental productivity and uh, focus is uh, much better in the morning if I'm you know, not eating anything. And uh, yeah, that's why I like, just like it. It's um, kind of the preferred way of, for me to do my work, to not really worry about food, uh, to not eat anything um, to disturb me and to not like waste time. I think the best benefit of this one minute day thing is that you save a lot of time uh, on cooking and eating and that, that kind of thing. And it's much more time saving. In that sense, I can do, yeah, like, you know, other things that I just uh, need to do and want to do. Do it! Then, uh, at like 10 a.m. or something, I will have the uh, kind of essential amino acids. So, uh, this is uh, like a supplement uh, powder. Essential amino acids are kind of, you know, essential. <laughs> they're, they're vital for things like muscle protein synthesis and uh, maintaining muscle and growing muscle. Uh, but they also have some other benefits. They have like benefits on producing neurotransmitters, uh, helping with um, yeah just recovery, and uh, even mood and your gut health. Those kind of things can benefit from uh, essential amino acids. I have that uh, protein uh, or the um, essential amino acid uh, sh shake in the 10 a.m. period because that's when um, the circadian rhythm of muscle protein synthesis tends to be most elevated. So there is some studies that find that your muscle protein synthesis is much more, um, let's say, sensitive or much more effective in the earlier part of the day, around 10 to uh, 11 a.m. or 12 a.m., somewhere between there. And uh, that's, I think, is a good uh, time for me to kind of take advantage of that. And I'm not doing the one meal a day because of, like, religious reasons <laughs> or that I have, like, some sort of a dogma that I need to eat one meal a day or autophagy benefits or something like that. Uh, I'm not doing one meal a day for that. I'm doing one meal a day only for the time management and the productivity benefits that I get. So I don't even care if I do have, like, a um, essential amino acid sh shake uh, in that uh, 10, hour, 10 a.m. period because my goal isn't to be in a completely fast state anyway. Like, uh, And uh, those amino acids, what I've noticed over the last one and a half years or so uh, since I've been using them is that uh, they do help a whole lot with uh, muscle growth and uh, recovery from exercise and strength development, uh, which is why I've also seen like uh, some significant uh, gains over the last one and a half years uh, by using them. Whereas if you're doing, yeah, like I'll explain later, but one meal a day only uh, without consuming any of the protein shake or something like that in the uh, daytime, then uh, it's very hard to build muscle. It's almost impossible to do that. So this is uh, just a hack to add in there to get away with eating one meal a day and still being able to build muscle. You son of a bitch! There are also even actually studies that find that the essential amino acids themselves may help with autophagy. So um, yeah, in this study, they used the different uh, amino acid mixtures. Uh, one of them was 100% essential amino acids, and the other one was 85% essential amino acids and 50% being non-essential. And both of them saw an increase in the um, activation of autophagy and some other benefits in terms of actually triggering apoptosis of cancer cells specifically. Uh, so yeah, there are studies, you know, the, the general idea is that amino acids will destroy, will stop autophagy, that uh, things like leucine and uh, isoleucine, methionine, those things will stop autophagy and the uh, amino essential amino acids, they do have those amino acids in them. Uh, but, as you can see, it's not that black and white, and even if it did, I wouldn't care <laughs> that much. By this time, I've been fasting already for like a significant amount, and I've gotten some autophagy, and even if I did break autophagy, then uh, it wouldn't matter. And it's not like that you break autophagy, then you have to start over again. That's a very like false, wrong way of thinking. Um, it would maybe like stop for an hour or two, but it would return to back after the fact. And, I, and even then, you know, as you can see, essential amino acids, they don't really stop autophagy, they may actually induce it. 
and the brand that I'm using is the um, health optimization supplements that they have uh, good amino acids. I'm not drinking coffee usually in this period. In this period, I'm not really drinking coffee on some days I may, but uh, most days I'm not. Uh, and I usually have my first cup of coffee and my only generally uh, cup of coffee at like 12 a.m. Uh, somewhere around there. I'll drink that uh, I'll, most of the time. It's just black coffee. I may add like glycine in there, uh, which lowers the blood sugar levels, uh, has some other longevity effects by balancing methionine. So it's a kind of good uh, longevity supplement even. Uh, I'll drink that regular coffee and that coffee itself also boosts autophagy and has a, other fasting mimicking effects that you get from caffeine and the polyphenols are from coffee. Uh, good supplement for that or good drink for that. Uh, then I'll also continue fasting again, not drink, not, not consume anything else. And when I start to work out, I work out usually around like 4 p.m. Uh, somewhere around there, 4 to 5 p.m. And, uh, and during this time I will have an actual protein shake, like one scoop of uh, protein powder, like usually it's whey, whey protein and uh, some other things like I may add like creatine again, some essential amino acids more. Uh, then I'll have like D-ribose or um, maybe inositol, which I've been using recently. Uh, those help with also energy production, uh, creatine for the uh, muscle strength and muscle power. The protein powder, the protein is uh, again for the similar reasons as the essential amino acids. So it's going to reduce the muscle catabolism and helps with muscle growth. Uh, and if I were to be working out fasted only without taking the protein shake, specifically doing resistance training, then I wouldn't see um, any muscle growth, <laughs> at least not for like a long time. Disappointed! Uh, if you have more specific muscle building goals that you could also do that you have the protein shake even in the morning, like in this 10 a.m. period, together with the essential amino acids, uh, that would also give you like an additional surge in the protein synthesis and you would uh, be able to build more muscle uh, compared to doing like this way. Uh, with this, you get like a one and a half uh, surges of muscle protein synthesis. But if you had like a second shake in here, 10 a.m., then you're going to get even, um, you know, three surges of uh, protein synthesis, uh, which is going to be um, much more optimal for muscle growth compared to doing it only once or compared to doing it only one and a half times. And uh, yeah, the reason why I'm not having a protein shake in 10 a.m. is because I'm not trying to like really build muscle at the moment. I'm just um, maintaining and I still want to, you know, get a little bit <laughs> mus more muscular and a little bit stronger. Uh, that's why I'm using it only during the workout, but I don't have like that specific goals that I want to, you know, pack on, I don't know, five to 10 kilograms of more muscle. Awesome, I love protein. So I work out at 4 p.m. I stop working out maybe like five or, or slightly before six. I'll wait a bit more. I'll take a sauna, usually infrared sauna or regular sauna, uh, relax a little bit and I'm not going to eat immediately after the workout. I'll wait maybe like an hour or two actually after the workout. Uh, so I'll break my actual fast with real food. Uh, sometimes it can be 6 p.m., sometimes it can be 7 p.m. So around there, like 7 p.m. usually is actually like a good time where I break the fast. And the first meal that I usually break the fast is with some sort of eggs and uh, some easy to digest vegetables. Uh, maybe like um, some um, steamed uh, vegetables, steamed broccoli, some salad like cucumber. Um, maybe some um, fermented foods, sauerkraut, kimchi, those kind of things, herbs, those kind of things uh, I'll eat. And the eggs I like because they're easy to digest. They also have a high stimulating effect on protein synthesis. They have high, high amounts of leucine and uh, other you know, good nutrients. So I'll just like to eat some eggs, maybe like a little bit of piece of liver to also get some more nutrients immediately after the workout and after breaking the fast. I'll wait maybe like 30 minutes or 15 minutes and I have slightly second larger meal, which would be like the main course. Uh, this main course would usually have like a slightly uh, different, uh, they would have more meat and some carbs. If I worked out, then I have carbs like uh, potatoes or rice or uh, some, I don't know, grains or uh, buckwheat, whatever. Uh, but also like some more kind of vegetables for the side. But generally it's gonna be slightly heavier on the protein and uh, higher on the carbs, whereas the first meal is usually lower on the carbs and um, easy to digest uh, proteins. So this is what it looks like, and I'll stop eating uh, maybe like 8 or 9 p.m. Uh, I, I go to bed usually like 11 p.m. So I still have like a few hours after finishing my last meal to digest the food and not interfere with my sleep quality, uh, which is a good thing. Bed goes up, bed goes down. You can also check out my book, Metabolic Autophagy, that talks specifically about uh, how I do it and the rationale behind it. And as well as the Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass, which is a 15 or 12 hour video course. 
Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.